Welcome back, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the URL class. Now, in Java, we always have to work with a variety of different types of objects. You could be working with a normal text object, you could be working with strings, or you could be working with an external object, like a file, or like another person's code. So, in our case, if we have to model a URL, we have the URL class to do so. This class exists so that we can say, if we have a URL, so something that links us to the internet, then we can start to break it down and get a lot of information about it. So let's try it out. Let's say we wanted, and we can keep it inside the same file test class, we want to make sure we first import in the java.net.url class. What does this class do? It simply is the way that we use and start to actually access the URLs we want to work with. In our case, we only need the URL class, but there's a lot of other classes inside of that package, all of which that have to do with connection to the web or to the internet. So let's say we now want to create a URL object. We're going to say URL, URL all lowercase, is equal to new URL. And then you'll notice that we need to have an argument here because a URL can't exist by itself. Just like with the files, a URL has to exist with another uh, actual location because there is no such thing as a blank URL. It just doesn't exist. So you have to put in said URL. So we can say xyz.com. The problem with this is twofold. First of all, Java can't tell you if this URL exists. There's exceptions that are going to exist so that if it tries to create a URL object for something that doesn't exist, that can't be created, then it's going to throw up an error. This is unlike with a file, because with a file, you can create a location, but I can always create that file later on. On the other hand, with the URLs, you can't create a URL. It ha a URL must be created separately. It's a completely different process. Unlike with a file, where we can locally create a new file or a new folder, with the URLs, we can't do so. So the exception, malformed URL, always has to be caught. You either throw it, or surround it with a try catch. In our case, we're simply going to be throwing, since we don't really care about this. And the other thing to note is that if you have something like this and you run your program, you'll be able to see that a big error will result. This is because you need to provide protocols. The way that URLs work in Java is that just like with files, you can either provide part of the URL or you can provide the exact URL. Now there's lots of different protocols for a URL. For example, there's HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, file. There's a lot of different ways to refer to a URL. So you need to make sure you have at least one protocol. Let's try this out with a simple website like the HTTPS Yahoo.com. Now what does this do? Now if you were to run your program, and we can, you'd be able to see that it's going to execute fine because we have a protocol here and that colon and the two uh, back the two slashes indicate a complete URL. So now Java can say, okay, I have a URL object and it models a real URL. A URL, unlike a file, can't model an, a non-existing object. It has to model a real object, a real URL that is. So with this, it says, yep, I have a real file. I have a real website to model this after. So I'm not going to have any problems. Now there are a couple of other uh, constructors for the URL class. There's one with a string protocol, string host, integer port, string file. Uh, there is one for string protocol, string host, string file, the URL, which is the one we're using, the URL object with the context, a string URL, uh, and all of these throw these malformed URL exceptions so that if you try to create a URL object for an object that does not exist, you're going to throw that exception, the malformed URL exception, and if you don't capture it and you don't uh, process it correctly, you're going to run into an error. Now the other thing to note here is that every single URL class has a lot of different methods you can use on it too. For example, we have the instance level methods that are going to be pretty useful. These are going to be much more networking focused. Unlike with some of the other ones we're going to get into a little bit later in this lesson, where you'd be able to actually understand the text on the website, in our case, these URL methods that are instance level tend to be much more focused on the technicality of the URL. So what's the protocol? What's the authority? What's the path? What's the port? If you don't care about this stuff, I encourage you, you can easily skip this and move on to the part where we start to actually interpret the URL. 
But just for that purpose, let's say we want to have a system dot out dot print line where we'll say URL dot uh, get protocol, which will return the protocol of this URL. Now we can see it's HTTPS, but if you were working off of another user's input, you might not be able to see this. Now we're going to test this with a lot of different methods, so we're going to have a copy pasted a lot of these. Then we're going to have the authority, so we're going to say get authority. This will simply return the authority of the class, of the URL. So what does the authority mean? It's simply the authority component. So in the case of yahoo.com, that's simply going to be yahoo.com. Nothing else, and it usually has a colon followed by the port. So in this case, the port, uh, the default port that is for HTTPS is usually going to be 80. After that, we have the get host method, and we have the get port method. Now these two methods, the get host, simply returns the host of the website. Many times the host and the authority could be different, so it's important to get both. And the port is the port that it's using to connect. Remember the default port for HTTP is 80, and so it's going to work like that. If you don't specify a port, it'll use the default port. This is the same thing that your web browser does, the only difference is it's going to be done through a Java program. And that way, you can start to actually manipulate web, web uh, objects, websites, as opposed to being limited to items on the user's computer. After that, we can have the get path method. Then finally, we'll have the uh, get file method and the get reference method. Now, if we run our program, you can see what these all do. So you'll notice that we get the protocol is HTTPS, which is correct. The authority is yahoo.com. The host also happens to be yahoo.com. The port, negative one. Turns out there's no path or file here, so it simply returns a slash. And obviously there's going to be no reference in that case, so it'll return a uh, null value. Now that we've done all this, though, we can say, how do we actually read from the URL? How do we start to manipulate this URL object? So if we want to take input from the URL, we can simply use a buffered reader object. or you can use some other reader classes, sometimes even the scanner with a little bit of modification inside, uh, if you're doing it correctly. So if we wanted to actually do this, we would simply say that we need to first create the new object. In our case, we're going to be working with buffered reader because it's really built to work with the URLs, whereas some of the other ones like scanner are a little bit more clunky. So you would create the buffered reader object. And you might be saying, well, what does this do? A buffered reader object is simply the way that uh, uses all of the cores of your computer and reads from a class. It's going to be a more efficient way to read when you're going from a file. So we create the object. We'll name it in for in, so input, equal to new buffered reader. Now inside of this, we have to open up a new input stream. So we're going to say new input stream reader. And then we're going to provide in the name of the object, in this case, URL dot open stream. Now this open stream method is a method that is in the URL class and it simply says this is how you can start to actually take input from it. But as a result, since not everything inside of the URL might be readable, a lot of things aren't by Java, by default at least, uh, without using some of the additional classes that you can find, then you need to have another exception. You'll notice this is going to be an IO exception. This is because the input might be of the wrong type. We're just going to have one final throws exception here. And after that, you'll notice that everything can now be cleaned up a little bit because the IO exception is a very general exception. And now, if we wanted to actually manipulate this, we can say that we want to print out every single line that we find there. So we're going to first create a new string. We'll call this input. Then we're going to have a while loop where we say while, and then inside of that, we're going to say while input is not equal to in, uh, in dot read line, and this is simply the reading in the same way that we used to have the uh, next int method inside of the scanner class. This does the exact same thing, except with the next line method. It just reads a line of text, and if that's not equal to null, so we're going to have the uh, exclamation point equal to null then we want to output the value. So we'll say system.out.println where we'll provide out the input. 
With that, we're now done with our loop, so we can close up the uh, input stream, the buffered reader stream. So we'll say in.close. So what does this do? It creates a new string, which will be the temporary line that's always going to be read. Then it has an assignment inside of the Boolean statement. So it says, well, first read the line. Then assign that value to input, which is the string we created right here. Then if that string has something in it, so if there's still text that's being read, output. Otherwise, terminate and close up the input stream. So let's try this out. Let's run our program. You'll notice that inside of your console very, very quickly, and this is actually a pretty involved program because there's a lot of text on each of these types of websites, you're going to get a lot of different amounts of text. What this is doing is it's reading through the code and it's reading through the actual URL itself. So it's saying, well, we have all of this text, so keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. And it's a very complicated website, Yahoo, so there's going to be a lot of various code to read through. As such, there's going to be a lot to print out, and so this is probably going to be a very long uh, printout. And the letter, longer you let it run for, the more difficult it's going to become. So hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. To summarize, in this lesson we talked about the URL class. We talked about how we can use it to get a lot of the basic information, the networking information about a URL how it throws a malformed URL exception, how we can uh, then use all of these methods and print them out. Then we talked about how to take input from the uh, URL itself, how to manipulate this using a buffered string and a while loop where we assigned before checking. And we talked about how you have to close the buffered reader before you could finish, otherwise you would run into trouble. And we ran our program and we saw how complicated one of these types of one of these websites can be because there's so much code to read. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson, and hopefully you'll join us for our next lesson.